All right, we have Stacy Wild Perry from Simplify uh, with us again uh, for a segment that I, I just wanted to kind of do an overview of a very popular to advertising topic of OTT and CTV. So over the top and connected TV, which is essentially streaming video. I'll let you explain a little bit more as well too. But uh, Simplify is Ethic Advertising's preferred DSP for a lot of things. Um, we are consider ourselves Simplify experts. We have a very tight relationship with Simplify, uh, Stacey and her team. And I asked her to come on here to just kind of give some advice and some overviews as to what you know OTT is and bring a little bit of kind of uh, simplification to it to not to do a little plan of words. So thanks for coming on, Stacey. You know, always good to start off a segment with a dad joke. So uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah. But uh, I will never not do dad jokes. And I um, would love to just get a brief overview for the audience of what is OTT? What is CTV? What's the difference between the two? Yeah, so the way I like to explain it, and um, Honestly, I, I think no matter who you speak to in the industry, they're going to have their own definition. Um, so this is this is kind of how I look at it and how I go off of it. So CTV is a device type. So CTV is kind of like your your mobile device, a tablet device, a desktop device, whereas OTT is the inventory that comes over it. And um, so that would be over the top is OTT, CTV, or connected TVs. So, um, you know, when you are actually streaming, um, you know, through because we cut cable long, long ago. Um, so everything that we do is streaming. So anytime that we get an ad, that would be an OTT ad. The reason that not all ads, not all OTT ads are served on CTVs is because my husband and I have wildly different tastes in television. So, 50% of the time, if we're in the same room watching TV together, one of us is on our smartphone with our AirPods in watching what we want to watch while the other one is streaming the CTV. So it's mm -hmm. both OTT inventory coming over, um, but obviously CTV would be that device on your wall, whereas you can still access OTT inventory uh, while streaming through a mobile device, a tablet, a desktop, whatever it might be. Yeah, and I actually refer to that phenomenon as parallel play because me and my wife do the exact same thing and, and stuff. So just like a toddler do parallel play where they're near each other, but they aren't playing with each other. It's the same kind of thing with, with people's viewing habits. Um, but no, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great example. So essentially streaming, is streaming video on the TV is CTV, streaming video on anything is OTT, you know, yep. essentially. So, um, and then, there's also this thing called video pre-roll. So mm -hmm. can you kind of share a little bit about what video pre-roll is and like how it's different than OTT and CTV? Yeah, and, and so pre-roll has become one of those things that um, the term pre-roll has been used to um, encompass a lot that isn't necessarily actually pre-roll, um, which is why um, I call it online video, but what it really is, is and, and pre-roll is the most um, common form of online video. Um, that is like when you go to a website and you, um, you know, you're reading a news article and you have to watch that little 10 second ad before the, uh, the company, the actual video segment that accompanies the article you're reading comes on. You know, if, if you're on a uh, popular sports site that has top 10 plays, and they make you watch, um, you know, like I said, again, a, a, a five, 10, 15 second ad before you get to the actual video content you're trying to consume. That is what we call pre-roll. Um, there's also mid-roll and post-roll. Sometimes the video is long enough, you get that ad in the middle. Sometimes you'll get one at the end, just, just for the heck of it. Sometimes um, video players will pop up um, onto the website and will not actually be blocking you from the content you're trying to consume, but might be playing off on the side in an individual player. Um, that's not pre post or mid roll. So it's just kind of there, which yeah. is why, um, you know, again, online videos just kind of encompasses um, everything. Yeah. And then also a uh, video and banner ad as well, too. It would be, the, yes. I guess, the other one that would be off the top of my head. 
So um, it's it's really interesting. We've like at our agency, we've been talking for years about well, we don't just buy TV any, anymore and, and everything. And it's not just like you buy digital and stuff, but you look at it as buying video because you have all the components that you just talked about, but you also have social media, you have cable TV, you have broadcast TV, you have out of home video as, as well too. There's a lot of components that incorporate video that from an agency side of things, we have to kind of think about and consider uh, and everything. And then where you have more on like your, your side of things where you get very expertise in uh, you know, a number of these very valuable kind of distribution components and everything. But uh, you know, it's one of those kind of wild things where when you have a, have a video commercial, how you utilize it is really neat. Also how you create it is neat as well too because the creative can sometimes um, be more effective if you gear it towards something that's gonna be digest through OTT streaming versus you know, at a gas station pump versus over broadcast or whatever it might be as well too. So my last question for the OTT is, is a very complex, and I have a diagram somewhere, it was around somewhere I shared with you a while ago uh, where we detailed out exactly what this all was but it was like a hodgepodge mess. Uh, so in simple terms, if someone, let's say one of my clients comes to me and says, we're gonna buy OTT and we utilize Simplify's DSP to uh, plug it in all of the data that we have and, and optimize it and, and run the campaign for them. Once it goes through Simplify, kind of what's that process like? Cause it's, it, we're able to tap into almost every single OTT provider out there, right? Mm -hmm. There's some that we can't, but, but almost all of them. Yeah, and so um, let's see. The, uh, the easy way to explain it. Mm -hmm. It's a big ask because it's not an easy thing to, it it's, it's a complex easy. thing. It is, it is a yeah. complex thing. Um, you know, and, and, and this is, you know, a little bit of programmatic 101, but Programmatic had a bad reputation in the beginning of programmatic by selling remnant inventory. And what that was, was it was inventory that the publishers themselves were not able to sell directly. Um, the reason that um, programmatic had that reputation was because the publishers were very vocal that, well, this is the inventory that we didn't sell directly. Having worked on the publisher side of things, I can tell you that publishers like to, when they do sell directly, jack up the prices oh, yeah. and require huge buys. Yeah. So that does lead though for a tremendous amount of inventory to not be sold. The other thing is staffing um, a, a sales team for direct buys only also leads to um, very expensive overhead. So, um, as companies were starting to realize, you know, we could actually be more efficient by selling the majority of our inventory programmatically, you started to see an increase in SSPs, which is uh, what SSP is a supply side platform. So basically the SSPs and the DSPs, which is what Simplify is, uh, talk to each other. So these, um, these publishers, for lack of a better word, but you know, the Roku's of the world, um, even the apps directly. So if it's, you know, the ABC app or the HGTV app or the ESPN app, they will take that inventory and they will work um, to integrate themselves to um, allow inventory and impressions to sell, um, or sorry, to, to be sold through these SSPs, which is then where Simplify a DSP can kind of pick what they want. Gotcha. And we pick what they want based off of them matching all the different targeting parameters. We talked about that in another video as well, too, where, you know, one of Simplify's benefits is making all of these different SSPs available uh, to us at once and then also be able to layer on, well, I don't just want to be on anything and everything, I want to be able to target geographically, demographically, um, financial uh, 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 demographics, income levels, intents, interests, 
uh, keyword targeting, geofencing is a major staple of you guys as well too. Mm -hmm. So um, hyper targeted, you know, location based uh, and everything. But no, I mean that makes that makes a lot of sense. And that's me being on the publisher side of things at CBS for for a while. That's exactly what it, what it was. Is we jacked up the prices on it and kind of said this is premium first you know first come inventory and everything and then you know as i kind of really how i got to simplify is i used um uh vendors and i realized that i could get it for cheaper if i went a little more direct and kept cutting out middle people yes. and then i got to a point where we're really as direct as we possibly can be without becoming a dsp ourselves uh and and um it's which been, takes a lot of tech and work to become yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really not worth it for for someone like it like us. We have three hundred engineers for a reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things where um, we are are able to do things that I was able I was doing at the beginning of my ad agency for half the cost uh, up to you know like there's some certain things that we've done when it comes to display ads that is probably 75 percent cheaper um now than it was when i was doing it be, before and everything and the neat thing is is um we're able to operate as these big kind of you know media vendors that are using dsps as well simplify partners with with media publishers all the time too uh, and but we don't have the overhead as an agency so that's been actually a huge asset for us i'm really really liking but that's that's always like nice to have a peek behind the curtain that it's good quality inventory because there's so much of it, um, but it's just actually better targeting with good quality inventory. That means that all of a sudden the uh, the programmatic side of things become very, very valuable. And although you can buy direct OTT to certain you know individual places, um, we do that a little bit, uh, primarily with, with some Comcast freewheel kind of stuff, but most of the things we get the most bang for our, our buck at Ethic when we do OTT is through like the Simplify platform because of the extra targeting, because we're not really getting more premium inventory, we're still getting great inventory, and we're not just buying Comcast freewheel distributions, we're buying a number of other ones as well too, so uh, we've been very, very pleased with, with OTT. Oh, love to hear it. Yeah. Any anything else that you wanted to share uh, for somebody that is, you know, kind of thinking about uh, utilizing OTT? Is there um, uh, any other component that they should be aware of or kind of leery of um, or or anything to ensure they can kind of hit the ground running a little bit, a little bit ahead of people that are just kind of like stumbling through figuring out buying OTT? Yeah, I think a big common misconception is that you still need like, a, you know, massive TV production level quality commercial to run OTT and CTV. And um, you just, you just don't, you just don't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm starting to see a lot more commercials where it's, it's plain animation. Um, but, you know, having a video that can be easily um, repro you know, or not reproduced, but repurposed across, you know, not just CTV, but put it on, you know, social, use it on Facebook, use it on Instagram, put it, um, put it on online video, use it as pre-roll. It can be simple. You don't, you do not have to invest in, you know, $20,000 for the production of a commercial just for one spot. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, um, that, old school thinking of, you know, TV production and that financial hurdle that I think kept people from doing it. Um, you know, I, I think we're starting to see more and more of this, find a good creative partner that can create a, you know, an, an animated video for you that doesn't yep. have any speaking. It's, you know, when you take out live talent from your commercial, you're a saving money, but B you're also saving time and, and, um, equipment because you don't have to keep doing take after take because they're not going to flub up their lines, you know? Yeah. So, I think so that's, that's awesome. And, and for us, our agency does provide um, video production services and we do shoot things that are really low budget and create things that are really low budget when it, when it kind of calls for it. We also do the higher end stuff as well too. But I think that why it's so successful in this digital component is um, 
broadcast TV, cable TV has uh, a higher quality need. Um, digital is going to be more compressed. It doesn't need to be as high quality of, of video as well as broadcasting cable. You have to grab somebody's attention that's yep. out of a bigger group population. When you have digital advertising that's gone on, no matter if it, we're talking about OTT mainly, but if it's any other online video, including social or whatever it might be, uh, you're able to target more. You'll be able to be more effective. So it's one of those things where you want to have a compelling message. You know, you yes. can't just put anything out there, but it's one of those things where the message can maybe resonate with a hyper-targeted audience uh, and be effective. Uh, where with TV, you know, it, it tends to help to have, you know, some better production kind of stuff for certain things and everything. But even TV, like we're getting to the point uh, now as well, too, where money doesn't equal convincing somebody. It's all about what the message is and how you portray it. And that's actually become one of our specialties is taking kind of smaller budget productions and saving more money for distribution and figuring out how do we get something that makes somebody stop pay attention, listen, and then act. Yep, so, exactly. Awesome. Well, Stacy, thank you again for uh, joining me and talking a little bit about OTT. I really appreciate it uh, and, and everything you and your team uh, does, does for us. And uh, I'll, I'll be talking to you again later. Sounds good. Thanks again, Jeff. Yeah.